Hey guys, I'm Dr. Horshig, and today we're going to talk about the three worst stretches you need to stop doing. Get up and get down, get up and get down. All right guys, so there are a number of stretches that people will use to improve their mobility in the gym. But here today, I want to talk about the top three worst stretches I see strength athletes doing. I'm gonna talk about why they're so bad and I'm gonna talk about what are ways in which you can improve your mobility but still keep your body safe. Now the first one is the one I was demonstrating at the intro of this video, called the sleeper stretch. Now let me show you again what it looks like. This is often given by physical therapists, chiropractors, doctors, as a way to improve internal rotation of the shoulder. We'll take it here, push it down. Now ideally you're supposed to be feeling a light stretch in the back of the shoulder and for some people it's not the worst exercise if done correctly for the right person. But it is often done incorrectly. Now let's first talk about why do we need shoulder internal rotation. Now as a strength athlete, let's say you're doing a snatch or a clean. Say during the pull of the snatch that barbell comes up and then over the head. We obviously, for efficiency purpose, need to keep that barbell close to the body. We don't want that barbell looping away. So what that means is that you need a sufficient amount of shoulder internal rotation coming down here. Let's say you can only get about there. That's as much internal rotation as you have. Well, what that means is that in order to keep that barbell from drifting away from your body, you're gonna have to dump that entire shoulder complex forward. That's gonna put you in a bad position and eventually could lead to where you're having some injury because the shoulder joint itself is not working in a very good way. So we don't want that barbell to drift away, so we're gonna try to prove our shoulder internal rotation. Now remember, we only need a sufficient amount of internal rotation. We don't need a ton of it for a strength athlete. So people will often say, you're missing internal rotation, let's improve with the sleeper stretch. Now, why is that a problem? Well, like I said before, when most people get down here and stretch into internal rotation like this, thank you, Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, turn off. <laughs> we'll keep on going. No. We'll do it live, F it. So when most people get down here with the sleeper stretch, they will pull down and they should ideally feel a good stretch back here, but most people do it incorrectly and they jam that shoulder down as hard as they can. They get really aggressive and they feel pain in the front side of the shoulder. Now, why is this so common? It's because this movement specifically is a test for impingement. If you come to a physio, a physical therapist, a chiropractor, a medical doctor, and they're testing your shoulder to see if you have an impingement-like injury, they'll often bring your arm across and pull down. This is a test called the Hawkins-Kennedy test. Now, what does this look like? It looks like the sleeper, the sleeper stretch straight up and down. So why do I want to stretch in a very similar position than a test for shoulder impingement, a shoulder injury? You don't want to do that. Second thing is when we get down here and when we stretch like this aggressively, it can also place a lot of harmful stresses on the shoulder capsule. So this is not a very good and efficient way to improve internal rotation because there's so many negative drawbacks, so many risks to the stretch. Now, what you can do instead, here's a replacement that's much safer. It's called the cross body stretch. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your arm and you're going to pull across your body. Research has shown that pulling your arm across your body in a cross body stretch, you'll bring out a good stretch back here, is actually just as efficient and sometimes even better than the sleeper stretch at improving shoulder internal rotation directly after. Now again, what are we looking at stretch time? Maybe 10, 30 seconds, a couple, and then back. Now one thing you can also do to make the stretch a little bit more efficient is to pin that shoulder blade down so it's not pulling out too far from your body. Just stretch like this and then pull across. From here, my shoulder blade is jamming into the floor so it's not pulling out too much. I'm pulling across my body. Again, you should not feel any pain with this in the front side of your shoulder. Maybe change your arm position if you need to. But you're feeling a good stretch in the outside part of your shoulder. 10, 30 seconds, back up. And like I said, research has shown that the cross body stretch is more efficient than the sleeper stretch at improving shoulder internal rotation and it's safer because there's less risk because most people do the sleeper stretch incorrectly, jam it into place, place excessive stretch on parts of the capsule and get that impingement because we're mimicking that impingement test called the Hawkins Kennedy test. So that is the first stretch you need to stop doing, sleeper stretch. Let's talk about stretch number two. A lot of people need to improve their thoracic extension. We sit at computers all day, we look at our phone, we're very kyphotic in our upper back. 
back. So we're mi limited in how much motion we can extend that back. That's gonna hurt our ability to press overhead, do any back squats, front squats, and keep our chest upright. Now, what you'll see is people, they will take a foam roller, they will then take a weight, and they're gonna get down into a position where their back, mid back is on this right here, arm overhead, and they're gonna just crank it back like this and think that they're stretching their mid back like crazy. But notice, what's the position of my low back right here? I'm extremely arched. If you can see that, if I can pull my shirt up a little bit, I'm extremely arched because I got this heavy weight overhead. That is not efficient. Sure, you're getting a little bit of a stretch in your mid back, but we're also cranking out our shoulder joints like crazy and over arching our low back. So obviously not being efficient at creating the desired change in your mid back. So here's how we're gonna change it. First, take that weight, throw it away. I don't want you to do very heavy stretching overhead with weights like that. Sure, you can still use the foam roller. We're going to mobilize our mid back, but in a very efficient way where we're keeping our low back from overextending. You're gonna be in this position. You are going to brace your core. I don't want any movement from your low back. Hands up here and from here, all we're doing is arching in back just a little bit, sort of teeter-tottering over with that mid back. We can then roll up, go to another segment, teeter-totter back and over. Again, if this is too tough with your arms, you can cross them like this, but we're just going back and forth, back and forth. That is something that can be very helpful at safely improving mid back extension without overarching. Now, that is just with a foam roller. There is other tools that you can use. For example, we can grab a peanut. We can also make two lacrosse balls right here, taped together or in a sock like this. What that's going to do is give you just a little bit more efficient because if you think about it stretch, you're gonna have your spine that's running right up and down. These are gonna be placed on the outside part of the back. So again, you're gonna take that peanut, you're gonna place it around shoulder blade level. Now I like to really hug my back or hug my chest during this because it's gonna pull my shoulder blades out of the way. And then from here, again, small extension up and back teeter totter over, core stays braced. You could also take your arms above like this, place your arms real far above and back, maybe about 20 reps or so. And that's gonna help you safely improve thoracic spine extension without cranking on those shoulders and putting your low back in an overextended position, thinking that you're actually working on what you're needing to work on. So that is the second worst stretch. The third, we've talked about this before, let's talk about our pecs. Now, a lot of people come into the gym and they feel extremely restricted and tight in their pecs. What do they do? Grab here and they crank on it like this. They just really pull as hard as they can on a rig, on a wall. Now, what are they usually doing? They may get a little stretch in their pecs, but they're often feeling this a ton in their shoulder joint. If you can look at my shoulder, what am I doing? By cranking on it like this, I'm actually putting a lot of pressure on the front side, the front part of my capsule of my shoulder joint itself. I'm not efficiently stretching the pec, which is what I'm trying to do. I'm actually putting more harm on the front side of the shoulder than I am efficiently stretching the pec muscles. So what do we do in place? The first thing we can do is attack and stretch. You're gonna take a ball and pin it against that wall. You're gonna place it right in that pec. Now you can do it in a couple different positions and see what feels the most stiff but pin it in like this, okay? From here, let's actively move our arm over the top. So pin and then move the arm up, flex the arm up and then back down. And you can do this a number of times. This is an active release stretch of that pec muscle. And again, we're doing pec major, pec minor. You can go out to the side and back. Find the position that you feel restricted in and feel the most stiff, basically. So that is number one. Now, the second thing that you can do, you can do this position, but what you need to do is lean into it very slightly and don't over arch that low back and crank on the shoulder. So lean lightly into it until you feel a stretch in this position. For most people, that's pretty tough. So what are we gonna do? We're going to grab a PVC pipe and lay on a bench. Come right back here. So again, a lot of people cannot do that arm above the head on the rig and lean into it without getting that stretch. 
in the shoulder joint. So we are going to lay on a bench like this, feet up, arms in a good position, in that same probably bench press position. And you're just gonna move your arms overhead. Don't let that low back arch. And from here, just hold this position right here for maybe 10, 30 seconds, five deep breaths in and out. Because the arms are in an elevated position overhead, we're likely getting a little bit more stretch in pec minor versus pec major. But again, this is another way that you can safely low load because the PVC pipe stretch those stiff pecs in a way that is not going to place excessive stress on the shoulder joint. So there you guys go. Those are the three worst stretches you need to stop doing. Sleeper stretch, aggressively stretching that mid back over a PVC pipe or a foam roller with weight and really arching that low back. And the third one, really aggressively and cranking on that shoulder joint when you think you're actually stretching your pecs. Let's be smart in our way that we're approaching mobility work and not putting our body in harm's way. Hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, please like, comment on it, subscribe to the channel. Let me know if there's anything else that you wanna learn about in next week's video. Until then, happy squatting, guys. Whew. They say that energy flows where attention goes, so I pay no mind. Why waste my time with all these negative cats scratching so caught up in their egos, these people have